All right, guys. Um, uh, what I'd like to do uh, right now is introduce you to the next section um, of our uh, unit on energy. So we, we've just talked quite a bit about work and power, um, and now I want to talk about uh, what's called the conservation of energy. So this is a really important idea um, when we talk about energy. This is energy conservation. So get that out here. Uh, you're probably familiar with this word, uh, conservation. To conserve is to keep intact, not to lose, to hold on to. Um, and what energy conservation means broadly is that, and, and, and this applies always as far as we know, is that energy cannot be created or destroyed, right? Energy, the total amount of energy in a system is always constant. Um, so energy uh, cannot be created or destroyed. Um, it can, however, energy can be converted from one form to be from one form to another. So it can be converted from one form to another. And it's that conversion that we're going to be thinking about quite a bit uh, in this little in this little section. I want to remind you, though, uh, briefly, although. Uh, this will come up again. We're only thinking about mechanical energy in this unit. We're only going to be thinking about mechanical energy. Remember, um, that's energy associated with moving masses. Um, so there's a whole bunch of other kinds of energy. So frequently, I mentioned this before, but frequently um, when there's an energy conversion, frequently that involves heat. And heat is not mechanical energy. So we're going to sort of ignore um, in our discussion, we're going to ignore other forms of energy, such as heat. I may reference them br briefly every once in a while, but we're, I'm really going to try to confine our uh, treatment to mechanical energy. And basically, if you're thinking about mechanical energy, there's really two different kinds of mechanical energy. Um, uh, so let's, let's sort of break this down. The two different kinds of mechanical energy. The first we've already talked about, that's kinetic energy. Right, this is the result of a moving mass, a mass in motion. And we said the kinetic energy before is equal to one half the mass of the object times its velocity squared. That's our equation for kinetic energy. Here it is. Pretty sloppy. Let's try that again. So this is kinetic energy. You've got a, an object with mass m moving at, at speed v, and you just plug in the numbers here, and you get a certain number of, uh, of joules, a certain amount of energy in joules. And, and that's pretty obviously mechanical energy, right? It's a moving mass. Um, there's another kind of mechanical energy, though, which is, um, which is to say that if I were uh, standing holding a cement block over your head, it's clear that that cement block, if I'm just holding it over your head, it has no kinetic energy, right? It's not moving. Uh, there's no V. The V would be zero. So that cement block it has no energy. But at the same time, you're aware that in some senses it does have, um, it may not have kinetic energy, but it has some sort of energy because you're aware of the fact that, that that's very threatening. Having a cement block hanging over your head is very threatening. You know that if I let go of the cement block, it's going to gain kinetic energy, um, and that cement block therefore has the potential to do quite a lot of work on you, which is why it's threatening. So there's another kind of uh, mechanical energy, uh, which is related to a mass that may not be moving. It's called potential energy. Um, so this is um, uh, energy that an object has um, because it has the potential to do work. Um, because of its position, where it where it where it where it is in space, um, it, a cement block on the floor isn't threatening, but a cement block held over your head in that position is is uh, threatening. So this is um, there's a, a couple different ways of describing it. It's the energy associated with an object's position.
um, uh, sometimes it's it's in this might be clear when I get into it but sometimes it's called stored energy and we'll see why uh, really quickly what we call it stored energy because how did I get the the potential energy in that cement block over your head well I lifted it up and when I lifted it up by doing work and lifting it up I've stored energy in the object um, so what we say here is the potential energy how did I get that, that energy in the block? I did work. So the potential energy is equal to the work done on the object. Now what we're going to think about, so work done, we know that's F times D. And this is the general form of, of uh, the equation for calculating potential energy. Work done, FD. We're going to be thinking for the most part, uh, we'll, we'll spend most of our time talking about uh, specifically gravitational potential energy. Um, so this is the general form for potential energy. We're going to generally be thinking about gravitational potential energy. So um, in the special case of gravitational potential energy, force times distance, well, what's the force? Force is the force of gravity. That's mg. And what's the distance? Well, that's the height, h. So for our purposes, this is really the equation that we're going to be using. Now, this other equation applies this equation here, this general form, will apply to all cases. So, there's, for instance, there's another kind of uh, mechanical potential energy. If I had a bow and arrow or a slingshot, and I pull back on that bow and arrow or I pull back on that slingshot, there's energy stored, potential energy stored up in the slingshot or, or in the bowstring, and that would be FD, right? It's how hard I pull back on the bowstring times the distance I pull. But really, we're going to be using, we're going to be thinking principally about this right here. This, by the way, is measured in joules as well. This is joules as well. Um, so how does this work? Well, in short, you could say, let's imagine that uh, I have a, um, here's the ground. And I've got this, maybe I've got this 10 Newton cement block right and maybe I lift it up right I lift it up here so I'm holding it now at a height here is this 10 Newton block and I don't know maybe I've lifted it here uh, two meters maybe this distance right here is two meters so I've lifted up this cement block two meters up in the air so I might ask you okay well what how much potential energy does this cement block have if it has a if it has a weight of 10 newtons and i've lifted it two meters well m times g by the way that's the 10 right 10 newtons i've already this is mg don't get tripped up by that that is the weight mg and i've lifted it two meters so we would say the potential energy up here is 20 joules right that's 10 times two um, so that's the amount of energy that's been stored up in that block. Now, to get back to the, con the idea of energy conservation, energy can't be created or destroyed, but it can be converted from one form to another. So when we're talking about uh, mechanical energy, what we're going to be discussing is these two forms of energy being interconverted one to the other. So sometimes potential energy is converted to kinetic, sometimes kinetic is converted into potential. Um, so we're going to be thinking about just these two forms of mechanical energy and their interconversions. So to illustrate that, let's think of any, let's come up with an example here. Maybe, oh, I don't know, maybe we have a ramp here. Let's draw a ramp. And maybe this, this ramp here, um, here's the ground. Maybe the ramp uh, is 10 meters high. This height here is 10 meters from here to here. 10 meters and maybe I've got a block and the blocks gonna start right here we're gonna assume by the way that this ramp uh, is frictionless um, which is helpful because if there's friction friction is gonna produce heat and heat isn't mechanical energy so you end up not uh, it ends up not working with uh, with the potential and kinetic mechanical energy you have to take into consideration heat so let's not do that right now let's just assume it's a frictionless surface and let's say that this is a one kilogram block. This block has a mass of one kilogram. So what is the, and, and, and we'll say that it's starting here at rest. So it's at rest right here, at rest. Okay, so what is the energy? What's the total energy? Well, the total energy at this point, let's call this, by the way, just to 
keep everything straight. Let's call this point A. This is point A right here. What is the total energy at point A? Well, it has two types of energy. It has potential energy plus kinetic energy. So that's mgh, right? That's our equation for potential energies, mgh, plus our equation for kinetic energy is 1 half m v squared. Okay, so let's calculate these. Well, what's mgh? Well, m is 1, g is 9.8, and h is 10. So this is 1 times 9.8 times 10. And what's this? Well, this is 1 half of 1 times v squared. What's v? Well, it's at rest. So this means at rest, that means velocity is 0 which means this whole thing is going to go away. This whole thing goes to zero. It's supposed to imply that this is going to zero. It's going away. So this whole term goes away to zero. And so what's the total energy at point A? Well, uh, 1 times 9.8 times 10, that's 98 joules of energy. Okay, so that's the total energy at point A. All right, well, maybe we let go of the block, and it slides down to the very bottom right here. So now the block's at the bottom. We can call that, let's call it, go ahead and call that point B down here. Well, what's the total energy at B? Well, we'll do it out, but you probably already know the answer. Total energy at B. Okay, do that out. Well, it's going to be potential plus kinetic. It's going to be M g h plus one half m v squared. Well, what's m g h? Okay, well, it's at the very, very bottom of the ramp. H is now zero. So this is zero. This whole thing goes to zero. And it looks like all of the energy is now kinetic. Well, how much kinetic energy is there? Well, I don't know the velocity. I haven't told you that. But you should realize that conservation of energy means that if the energy is 98 joules here, it has to be 98 joules here as well. So now that what I'm saying is the total energy at B is 98 joules because of the energy conservation principle. These two have to be equal. So we, I could now ask you, what's the velocity at B? Velocity at B. And we could now calculate that because I could say 1 half mv squared equals 98. So I'm going to say 1 half the mass times the velocity squared equals 98. And I know that the mass is 1 kilograms, uh, so 1 half of 1 is half times the velocity squared equals 98. So I'm going to say 0.5 v squared equals 98. So now we can go ahead and solve for v. I'm going to uh, go ahead and divide both sides by 0.5. That's the same thing as multiplying both sides by 2. So I get v is the square root of 98 times 2. Um, uh, so wait, wait, where am I here? That's 196. Square root of 196, it's going to be like 14 meters per second. So now I've used the energy conservation principle to figure out the velocity at that point because of the idea that these energy values, the energy at A and the energy at B, these two numbers here, here, and here, have to be the same value. All right, well now let's go ahead and take a look at another point. Let's call this point C. Here's point C. And let's imagine that at point C the block is 3 meters. This is a height right here of 3 meters. Now I might ask you, okay, what are the energies at point C? What is the, the potential and kinetic energy at point C? So let's take a look at what point C would look like at point C. Well, again, I know that the potential energy, mgh, plus the kinetic energy, 1 half mv squared, ha have to add up to 98 joules. Again, the energy, the total energy has got to be 98. And since I know the 3, I can go ahead and calculate mgh. I can say that 3, or sorry, uh, what I'm going to say is m is 1, 1 times 9.8 times 3 plus 1 half mv squared equals 98. Okay, well, what is this? What is this, this value right here? That's 1 times 9.8 times 3. 
that's 29.4. So I say 29.4 plus 1 half mv squared equals 98. Okay, so now I know this is the potential energy. I've calculated the potential energy. This is, P, this is the potential energy right here. Which means that the kinetic energy here, this is kinetic energy, has to be equal to 98 minus 29.4. So the kinetic energy is 98 minus 29.4. Um, so that's 68.6 joules. So now right here I can say at this point I now know the, the potential energy is 29.4. Kinetic energy here, kinetic energy is 68.6. Maybe I could ask you now, follow up question, I'm asking a lot of questions about this problem, what is the velocity at point C? So what is velocity at point C? Well, we know 1 half mv squared, the kinetic energy, equals 68.6. 0.5 v squared equals 68.6. V equals the square root of 137.2. Do that out and you get 11.7 meters per second. That's the velocity at point C. So that's an example of an energy conservation problem. You can get a lot of different problems, a lot of different work, a lot of different answers, a lot of different kinds of work out of this problem. But we basically, again, we had this ramp that was frictionless. Um, we had a, a block at the very, very top. We calculated the total energy. It was, we said it was all potential at the top. And then we looked at point B, and we said at point B it's all kinetic. So the 98 joules of potential energy was released into kinetic energy. From there, we took a look at point C, which is a little bit trickier because at point C, the block has both potential energy and kinetic. And so we did a little calculation to figure out how much of each it had. We realized if we take a look at the potential energy, 9, 1 times 9.8 times 3, that's 29.4. The kinetic energy had to be then 98 minus 29.4, uh, and that's where we get 68.6. Uh, okay. That was a quick introduction to energy conservation. We'll do more practice problems on this concept next class.